Dewey Scruggs Show on NBC Sports Radio and the NBC Sports Radio mobile app. I remembered back in 1983, shopping earlier in the day at a store, and these two ladies who worked there in the sporting goods section were talking about how it would really be cool if NC State ended up upsetting Houston. They were the most optimistic ladies. And I remember shaking my head thinking, man, Houston put on a show against Louisville. And my goodness gracious, later on that night, the Wolf Pack did not pull it off. And one of the members of that team, Thurl Bailey, joins us right now. Thurl, hello. How are you? Good to talk to you. You see, Nui, a Carolina guy would think that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I was, I was rooting for the Pack from the standpoint of I, I love the story. I love the story, yeah. and it was – even though you guys beat beat Carolina in the championship to get in, but it was like, you know, it was just – that that game, that that five slamma jamma Louisville dunk contest, and you just think, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how. But it was good to see. But, man, thorough. I'm thinking and I'm doubting, what was the mentality you guys had? Well, we couldn't doubt. I mean, you know that. when you, When you're in the tournament – uh, and you've you've gone through the journey that we went through to get there. I mean, we didn't just beat, with all due respect, a Carolina team. I mean, you know who they had that year. You know, uh, they had Worthy and Doherty and the legendary Dean Smith. I cannot forget that. Other, remember the other guy's name? Uh, you know, yeah, Michael Jordan. They had on Buzz the Peterson. I got Buzz Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Peterson. That's the guy I was trying to remember. No, uh, so. The, the journey was magnificent, and obviously, you know, the word was we needed to win the ACC championship to even get to the dance. So, to be able to uh, get that far, and like you said, we watched the tape delay of of Houston and Louisville play, and you know, I, I don't think there was any doubt, but there was there's always caution. It's like, oh my gosh, but I think the one thing we had going for us was everybody pretty much said the winner of that game was going to win the title. And I think that was to our advantage because what do we have to lose? Yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. That was you know the confidence was definitely, you know, definitely to to Houston in that standpoint. Thurl Bailey joining us right now. Remember the nineteen eighty three NC State Wolfpack team, uh, coached by Jimmy Valvano. Uh, Thurl, I was talking to Jimmy Herrick years ago when he was coaching at UCLA, and he was coaching at Pepperdine That's back right. in eighty three, and he just lamented. Uh, how he said we had him, but we couldn't finish him. We had him. So that first game is against Pepperdine. You guys get that one done. Take take the listeners through that as you guys march to the title. Well, I've actually sat down with Coach Herrick since then and talked about that. He said the same thing to me, uh, and we started talking about Coach V and the way he was. I mean, you don't get in that situation like that and, and be able to pull out games if you don't take risks. And when you risk what Coach V did. I mean, you follow Dane Sutter, who's a 90% free throw shooter. And you make him, you put him in a pressure situation, and he's got to make free throws. And, and he missed, I think he missed two in that game. Um, and there was, a, there was a part of that game that right before a free throw was shot, Cozell McQueen switched sides because he was left-handed. And he switched with a Lorenzo, I believe. And uh, he comes up with a big, offensive uh, put back off a free throw and puts it in and sends it in overtime. So, listen, there's no doubt that it takes some luck in a journey like that, but it also takes, you know, the belief and the tenacity of a leader like Coach V to say, listen, guys, we're in it. You know, we, 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 what do we have to lose? Let's go out and play. We're not going to hold back. Uh, let's go out and play and see where we end up. Thurl Bailey's now a – Utah, member of the Utah Jazz, their TV uh, pre- and post-game studio analyst. He joins us right here on the Newey Scruggs Show. Thurl Bailey, Sidney Lowe, Derek Wittenberg, Terry Gannon, Kozel McQueen, Lorenzo Charles, a couple members of that 1983 NC State Wolfpack team that won the championship. So this year when you see Villanova win the championship and, and it's that signature moment of of the shot going in at the buzzer, and now you know it's going to be played within your shot. Just those those NCAA moments of the game-winning shot yeah. there. What are those kids at Villanova going to go through seeing that over and over? The way your shot lives in lore, uh, the, the, the NC State shot lives in lore, that Derek, the Derek put up that Lorenzo Charles slammed home? Well, that game against Carolina and Villanova was uh, obviously an incredible game against two great teams. 
And uh, and it's interesting because the final shot that won it was even more uh, it had even more importance on it because of the shot before it from Carolina. And so uh, it, what a, what an amazing game. And you know people are going to compare games, and uh, I think historically because of our journey and because of how you know the odds that were against us. Um, not that it, you know, to, to me, obviously, because I was a part of it, uh, the journey was probably just as important as the final game. But, um, you know, college basketball, that's what it's all about. It's, it's great. It's about, you know, to uh, lack of a better phrase, it's about those shining moments that college players have that will live on forever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, the comparison was, was kind of freakish, really, when it happened. Uh, because it doesn't happen like that very often. One of my uh, good buddies over at NBC, Raleigh, uh, Jeff Gravely, posted oh, yeah. some pictures. Oh, yes, posted some pictures of uh, you guys at the White House. So the 83 Wolfpack team made a visit to the White House yesterday. Take me through that and what it meant for you guys. Well, I think I have to go back a little bit because uh, at the 30th re- anniversary when we've, we've film the uh, 30 for 30 in Raleigh. Uh, one of the conversations after we had gotten done fil- got done filming everything was, man, I wish we could maybe someday have an opportunity to, to go to the White House. Maybe that's our ne- next adventure if it ever happens. And I'm not sure any of us at that moment believe that it could really happen. You know, how do you start something like that? How do you get that ball rolling? Um, but obviously somebody has to do it. I kind of took it upon myself to under the radar, to reach out to some folks, to write a letter to the president, uh, knowing that he's a great sports fan, knowing he probably knows our story. Uh, but then I needed a little bit of help, so I went to my good friend, Senator Orrin Hatch from Utah. And, uh, you know, although he's a Republican, I figured, you know, maybe he still had some, you know, some. he has a lot of pull uh, there in Washington. So uh, along with that support, with his letter, finally got the call and I called each guy personally and told them and man you, you should have heard some of the the cheers in the background and, and things like that when I talked to them it was so exciting to be able to give them that good news and yesterday uh, because of you know you build up to that moment you can never imagine what it's like until it actually happens and the president and the vice president walk in shake your hand and spend a good 20 minutes with you. Thurl Bailey joining us right here on NBC Sports Radio Thurl, you're also uh, chairman of the board for the NBA um, Retired Players Association. Obviously, yeah. so many guys, they, they're in the moment of now. They're working and trying to win games now, win championships now, secure all-star bit, you know, all-star status now. Thinking about things afterwards, it, it, it gets tough. How do you help these guys in transition to, into NBA retirement life, and what are you doing for the players now? Well, I think, first of all, the first part of your your question is about how do you help these guys? Listen, the the money that players are making in the NBA now is just uh, it's so lucrative. You know, guys are possibly set up for for life if they do the right things and take care of them. But at some point, that career is going to end, and uh, not all players have the pleasure of making large sums of money, and even more importantly, keeping it and doing well with it. Uh, our, our demographics right now, we have about 800 members in, in our brother and sisterhood um, with NBA, ABA, WNBA, and Globetrotters as our members. And so we have done a great job of really establishing uh, programs that help with that transition to those players' next careers. And so one of the things that with, uh, with the great leadership of Arnie Felco, our, our CEO, we try to tell these guys that are currently playing and are maybe close to retirement that, that uh, you know, you need to start thinking about that now and planning. And, and we're a great middle ground to help with that transition. So, you know, we've got some great partners, the NBA. Uh, we're working on a better relationship with the current Players Association. But um, we've got an amazing group of uh, guys and gals that, that uh, make up the NBRPA and, and I'm just proud to be the, the chairman for the last couple of years. Thurl Bailey, why don't you give me a, a, a just a quick Jimmy V line? He was notorious for his wit. Uh, one time, a uh, 
media member asked him if he recruited Chris Corciani because he was Italian, and Jimmy V said, no, I recruited him because I'm Italian. Give me one, that you had. <laughs> Give me one, that, one of those Jimmy V lines that, that, that he had for you, man. Well, I can tell you uh, one thing related to you know our, our visit to the White House. We didn't get a chance to, to go to the White House and visit Ronald Reagan, but Coach V did, and we did a live satellite broadcast. And I remember uh, President Reagan saying to Coach Valvano, um, forgive me, Coach, but I want to make sure, is your name pronounced Valvano or Valvano? And so, of course, uh, Coach V responded, it's Valvano. He said, uh, yeah, but one question for you, Mr. President, is yours pronounced Regan or Reagan? And it was, it was just hilarious that he was just so off the cuff with things like that and so comfortable with who he was, and, uh, and, and that's how he coached. I mean, he was a guy who tried to get us out of that comfortable box and, you know, made us cut down the nets with nobody in the gym pretending like we had won the national championship. And so, um, you know, the guy was just full of life. And, and you look at what his legacy's done with the Jimmy V Foundation, doing some magnificent things. That's why it was so great to have uh, Pam Bavano Strasser and her girls and Jimmy, Jimmy's girls uh, at the event yesterday. From Jimmy Valvano to the great Jerry Sloan, some Hall of Fame coaches in your uh, basketball career. Thurl Bailey, thank you so much for giving us some time here today. It was fun for me. It was fun. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. Hey, we're all in that ACC family, right? Hey, man, it was it was it was great to watch the thirty because it took me back to my childhood. That was really yeah. cool. And then and and then just being down here in Dallas Fort Worth to watch Rick Carlisle get dragged by yeah. Derek Wittenberg was something. I, <laughs> I have yet to ask. I don't even want to ask Rick about it. Dude, you had hair and he just drug you around the court that day. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, buddy. All right, Thurl Bailey. Now with the uh, Utah Jazz, a pre- and post-game studio analyst. All right, we've got one more segment to go. We close down shop and we turn things over to Chris Mannix. I'm Louis Scruggs, and this is NBC Sports Radio.